people willing to uh, serve the Lord and uh, and to serve in the church. And as uh, Carol was saying, uh, if uh, if we don't train them up, uh, there will uh, there will not be a church of tomorrow. And uh, so, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm just I'm just proud of them because it, it takes a lot. Like I said, you're a scary bunch, and uh, you know, and I <laughs> believe it or not, I, I about pass out every time I preach, just about. So. Uh, matter, matter of fact, the Lord did a lot to, when He uh, called me to preach. Uh, I don't do well all the time in front of people, and so uh, even the more you do it, uh, it, it doesn't become sometimes as easy. But uh, the Lord's always good to me, and uh, I pray for His strength, and He gives me that. But uh, for young folks uh, to learn to uh, to be in front of people and to praise the Lord, to sing, to do things, that's a it's a wonderful thing, and I think they all did a great job, and we're very proud of them. And, uh, and it, it glorifies God in doing just those things. But for the small amount of time we have this morning, and again, we've got the baptismal service to follow, and we're going to take communion. So uh, if, you, if you listen fast, I talk fast. Uh, I want to give you something this morning, but uh, I hope it'll be a blessing to you, but very short, and then we'll, again, uh, close out our service, take a small break, have our communion, and then move on. But uh, in first se- or Second Timothy chapter 4 this morning, I want to read eight verses to you and then uh, preach to you or give you just a few things about something that, uh, again, part of something I've been on. I'll explain that. But Paul writes, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away from their ears from the truth, and shall be turned to fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them, that love his appearing. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the day. We're thankful for the young folks and uh, the part they had in the service. And Lord, we just ask that you might bless them and encourage them as they continue to serve you. Father, bless in the time of our service now, the preaching. I ask that you might fill me with the power of your spirit. Take these things that we have to say this morning. May it encourage and may it meet needs on each and every heart and life. Bless in our service to follow and we commit it all unto you and ask for your help. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. The passage that we're reading this morning is Paul's last words that we have recorded in Scripture as we feel because uh, he's pretty much come to his last days. He knows he's about to uh, have his life taken from him. Uh, Matter of fact, tradition will tell us that uh, Paul will be beheaded in Rome by Nero and that these are probably the last things as he writes to young Timothy, a preacher, and he tries to encourage him in some things. But I titled this lesson, uh, He is Risen, Run With It. And uh, I've preached on that same topic. This will be the last of that particular series. Uh, I preached on He is Risen, Now What? After Easter, uh, those uh, that were uh, gathered in the upper room, God empowered them. And what were they to do? They were to wait on the Lord and go serve Him. I then preached uh, last week, He is Risen, Don't Lose It. Uh, They surely didn't need to let the faith go and the fact of the resurrection and those things and wanted to continue with it. And we're thankful that it has continued. And may we, because we have that truth of the resurrection, may we uh, learn some things from them. Uh, sometimes we wait on God to have his power, but we already have what they waited on. But we surely don't want to lose it. Uh, we surely don't want to have to go in a constant state of needing revival. We hope we live for the Lord and to serve him. But lastly, this morning in this series, I thought, and uh, the Lord had gave me this a few weeks ago, but he has risen, run with it. And um, I, I thought of Timothy and uh, Paul's writings there and what Paul was given is again, his final words before he was to be taken out of this word, world. And Paul's words had a message of encouragement and challenge for us. And I wanna give you those things very quickly this morning and to think about because, you know, our risen Lord, Jesus came out of the tomb. We have something so different than all the other cults and isms and faiths of this world that we have a risen Savior that we serve and lives within us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's given us all that we need, oh, that we might be encouraged just to live for him in the time that he has given to us here on this earth. And that sounds so easy and it sounds so simple, 
But when we look at the Apostle Paul, he was one who did just that. And first and foremost, I think that he, and he said here, he put up a good fight. And that's what he said, I have fought a good fight. You know, uh, Paul from time to time will use some of the uh, language of the day that sort of implies uh, some of the sporting events and things that took on boxing and some of that fighting being some of those oldest events, even we know from Olympic events and going back. And, and Paul sort of compares to that, to the a struggle and things. And he says, I've put up a good fight. I've done all that I can do uh, to serve the Lord. But he's talking about his service to the Lord. If we took time this morning back in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 23 through 28, Paul gives a little bit of a laundry list of things that happened to him. Most of us quit serving the Lord and sit at the house after the first couple of things. Uh, you know, shipwrecks and stonings and just all the things. He talks about being in poverty. He talks about or with food and without. I think I'd have to go read it or I'm going to terribly misquote it. But for sake of time, I'm not going to do that. But all of the things that Paul talks about that he encountered in his life, it wasn't an easy life. And the Christian life is never an easy life. We sometimes get uh, the idea, and especially uh, occasionally from some of the uh, larger shows and, and those preachers and some, sometimes a, a, a sort of a, a health and wealth Christianity that you get saved and it's going to take care of all your problems and it does that. It is going to take care of all your problems because you have a home in eternity. You're uh, a home in heaven. Your sins are forgiven. But it doesn't mean that we still don't live in this world and the physical pains are going to come because we, we have a sin-cursed body. And, and Paul, I think, had to bear through some of those in his life. Persecution may come because not everybody in this world sides with the things of Christ. And they don't always treat Christians nicely, especially in Paul's day. He's about to lose his life over that. But Paul says, I've put up a good fight. Whatever the Lord sent to me, I encountered that, I tuck it on, and I stayed faithful. I gave him my best shot I guess, getting ahead of myself. But he said, I put up a good fight. And first and foremost this morning, because he is risen, because the Lord uh, is risen from the tomb, you and I are to put up a good fight for our Christian life and our Christian faith. And that we are to stay uh, true to those things that God has given to us. And Paul said that, and that's the things that he quoted in verse seven, where we're using this morning, I have fought a good fight. Uh, this morning, I wonder if we can say uh, that we're in the midst of our life, that we're fighting a good fight. And uh, there may be the trials and the things that are in our life, the things we're facing, uh, they may be struggles, but yet we have one with us who goes through it with us. And we're never alone in that. And the Lord helps us. And he hadn't always promised us again, uh, you know, a whole lot of this or a whole lot of good, a whole lot of money, but he's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He's promised to help us in our time of needs, uh, just uh, to be with us. And hopefully we can say that we have fought a good fight, just like the Apostle Paul. Secondly, this morning, he says, I finished my course. Uh, again, thinking of those, uh, even when you look at the idea of running, and uh, that goes back as one of the old time uh, sporting events, been around for a long time, people running for competition, running for distance or track or something of that nature, racing. But Paul says, I finished my course. You know, I like that. Matter of fact, I put in my notes with uh, some little uh, marks around it and stuff that and sort of pulls out that Paul says, it's my course. My course is different than your course. Uh, the things that God has called you to do or that will call you to do or use you in your life is different than any other Christian. And therefore, we don't compare ourselves to others. We're not in a race to see who quote, wins, but we're in a race to see who finishes. And Paul says that I've finished my course. Oh, that we might say on the day that, and we may not know this day, Paul's getting close to the day that God's going to take him home. And he knows that. And he's been revealed that. And he, I mean, the, the verse above it, he says, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Paul's been given that, that he knows his day's coming. Uh, he understands he's maybe he very well to be in prison or in, uh, you know, uh, sort of being, have been taken prisoner at this time. He knows that he is lined up to be executed. Maybe he just knows at the time that it's coming, the Lord revealed that to him. But nonetheless, Paul comes and he says, I realize my course is coming to an end, but I'm going to finish my course. You know, as we look back over Christians and especially some of us who've been saved for a long time, we've seen many fall to the wayside. We've seen many go by and stray. And I think they're saved. They trusted in Christ, but they've quit for one reason or the other. Maybe because of the first part, 
They didn't put up a fight. They didn't realize when things got tough, they just sort of laid down. Maybe they didn't feel that God gave them everything they needed. Maybe they uh, felt that God should have fulfilled this or done that. And a lot of times that comes from some wrong applications of Scripture. But they didn't come to a place of finishing their course. And many fall by the wayside. We see some in Scripture uh, that did this. Uh, Paul even uh, later talks about it. He talks about a man by the name of Demas. And, uh, and he said that Demas had forsaken him down in verse 10. Not everybody finishes the race. Not everybody does what they should do. But hopefully you will do what you do and that you will have a strong finish to your course. And that no matter what happens to others around you, that you'll finish somewhere and uh, that it may be at the end of your course. And you just set your guide upon that and say, this is the life that God has given me. And I want to finish well. And I want to have a strong finish and just continue. And you may fall. You may uh, get up uh, or uh, to uh, fall down. You may get knocked down, whatever happens. But get up and continue on. And we have the help of the Lord to do that. And Paul could say not only that he had fought a good fight, but he said, I had a strong finish. My course has come to an end, but I finished what God gave me to do. And we may look out and say, well, my work is never done. Maybe I didn't get enough done in my family, enough done, in, you know, for the Lord, enough done. In church. But again, if God in his timing had us to finish our course as he would have us to, may we finish strongly and may we serve him. And then it comes lastly to what Paul said. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You know, uh, from the very time that Paul came to meet the Lord, you may remember that we find Paul first off, and he was going by the name of Saul. And he was on a road to Damascus, and he was actually carrying letters against Christians. He had things that he was persecuting the church. He was completely opposite of what a believer and a Christian should have been. Matter of fact, at that point in time, he probably hated the things of God. He hated Christians, and he was carrying papers against them to imprison them, probably take their lives, other things. He was on the road to doing that. I think he was probably working his way up the political ladder. He was very involved in the things of that day, but he hated Christianity. And all of a sudden on the Damascus road, Paul came, uh, I believe, in a face-to-face, -face, but uh, really God met him there. And a bright light shone around about him and God would speak to Paul and change his life. And not everybody gets that experience, obviously. But from the time of the Damascus road and the blindness that came upon him and then God taking and giving his sight back to him and all that Paul would have come about from his conversion and those events. And matter of fact, he, he used that a lot. Matter of fact, it's recorded three times in Acts because that was Paul's story. He said, this is what I have. I was on the road to Damascus carrying out threatenings. Lord, this is what happened to me. But I met the Savior. Paul met the risen Christ as an apostle born out of due time. He was called to do those things. And from the Damascus road till this time in which his earthly life is about to be taken from him, from his new birth till his time of departure, Paul stayed faithful to the cause of Christ. Faithful through it all. It didn't matter if his ship was wrecked. He may have thought, well, God's taking me home now. God said, you're all going to survive. He gets out of the ship. He begins to gather them together. He tells them, you know, this is the Lord's will. God's got a plan in this. You know, maybe from his battling his eyesight and some of the physical infirmities he had, troubled he was, but yet he stayed faithful through it all. The man was put in prison. Uh, we have four wonderful books in the Bible because of that prison experience. And that was the time he was allowed to write and give and God gave that and used that. You can imagine how frustrated he must have been because I just can't do those things faithful through it all. Whatever we have of Paul, whether they were chunking rocks at him, doing other things. I mean, matter of fact, his descriptions throughout the uh, writings of him of what all he went through. And yet he stayed to where he could come at the end and say, I fought a good fight. I had a strong finish to my course that God gave me. And I stayed faithful to the cause of Christ. Oh, if we had only realized what Jesus did for us. And we say, well, we all know what he did for us. He died for us. He was buried again. He rose again the third day. And he is risen today. But oh, that we might run with it in our hearts. That oh, we might decide that it's more than just the fact he saved us. He's left us here for a purpose. We might find that in our lives. And we might fight a good fight. Have a strong finish that all of our days 
We can look back and say, I'm just working my way, doing the will of God, running my course as God would give it to me. But I stay faithful to him through it all. He is risen. Will you run with it today? Will you take what he's given to you and will you serve him? Paul did from his, again, not all his life. Paul can look at his younger days and early life and Paul was as far from serving the Lord as he, he could be. But God again would bless him and he would surrender the new birth and he would again be a champion for the cause of Christ. He is risen. Run with it. Are you saved today? Have you had that new birth? If you haven't, Trust in the Lord and know Him. Have a home in heaven, but be put on a path. And if you're on that path, if you've been saved, fight the good fight. Stay faithful. Finish your course. Paul set the example. May we follow Him. If you're able this morning, let us stand with our heads.